There we go, wires out. Got the string, tied it on there. I've sort of tied it on there, give it a little bit of uh, tension. Yeah, but as you can see, the O-ring's there. And, oh, almost. See, because I've tied it at the other end, I can actually get to lift a little bit and wiggle and jiggle. And with a bit of luck, and a finger deeper inside, we get it through. There we go. And um, I'll undo this. Actually, I'll get this ready straight away. And I probably should undo this and just... Oh, fuck me, man. Keep it held there, and actually string that through there. Surprised me how much you can do with one hand and a couple of teeth. And there we go. Still got the string in my mouth, but uh, once we get this threaded, yep, we're threaded, then we're pretty much saved. <coughs> I can spit that out. Anyway, you guys get the general idea when these two sides tighten up together. That hole saw is just a little bit too big, which is fine. Which is fine, it's only, you know, about one eighth of an inch too wide. Uh, but that doesn't matter as the two rubbers, this one here and the other one, push together reasonably tight, then we are saved. And now I've got to just pull my string line back through and uh, retrieve it because it fell off and rolled down there. And that's that. Complicated looking job done quite simply. Well, not all of these trees, but some of them go rotten on the ends big time. Now you look at this. Not too bad, you know. It's pretty good. Uh, there's one down there. It's almost spot on, the logs there. Whereas the other one beside it that comes up to here that is as rotten as shit and then you've literally got three quarters of an inch worth of rot the whole way around and that's the good part there's part down there where it's it's looking like this you know where it's just two thirds rot and one third actual real wood in the middle well this one looks alright here I just realised up there. All that there. It's all just stringing away. Ready to collapse. With about one third of the wood looking sort of alright in the middle and, and all the sides are just going to fall down. But that's, uh, that's so bad I think it's actually going to collapse around that break point there. Some of these ones, like that one there, just as bad. And yet you get other ones come out here, like that, that aren't a problem at all. All out of the same tree. So it's sort of intriguing that uh, some stuff's good and some stuff's not. This is the one that's got the big crack. Some point. Maybe next year after we've put the fence in or whatever. I'll come up here, cut all these smaller ones out of the bottom and just start dropping these bigger ones individually, one at a time and then uh, once most of those are down might just come in sideways and just piss that off probably doesn't even matter to come in sideways but uh, at least stop all these from if this cracks off through here stop all these from hitting, you know, grey water and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. And of course those will just end up bonfire ones and I'll sort of have to pick the, the good out from the bad and uh, go like that. But I should be doing some washing. I've been doing everything else today. Busy 
dragging tons of this crap out of here, dipping and diving through all of here. It's actually come out quite good. Um, I'll take you around there in a second, but I've got to refill up this wood heater again. And I should be doing washing, but that uh, might be what I'm doing in the next half hour. Kitty. Meow. So this is going reasonably well in here. I'm sick of holding my finger over this microphone. The breeze is always coming and going. Um, some of that I think has got the termite stuff in it along with that. Leaving that in here. Um, it's all said and done. I'm going to have to rake up quite a bit of crap. But uh, there's just a hat for more. And that one. And that one that I've got to go out. Um, yeah, well this is pretty much sorted. I got some of the, uh, even some of the fence posts and got them out from the chicken wire under here. Chicken wire is going to have to be tied up and dragged out, I think, because uh, half of it's under the ground and that's generally how we get it out. It may not actually be under the ground per se, but it's under all the, like if that was normal clay, I wouldn't be able to do that with my boot, but that's all your cypress pine leaves that have been rotting for the last since 1927, however many years that is. Um, and they're all sunk under that in a lot of cases. It just sort of comes up and then it goes back underground again and then it comes back up again to the surface over the rock back underground. So, yeah, we've got stuck into it all and cleared out a lot of uh, this. Uh, the only remaining ones are the ones that are holding this branch up. Um... Yeah, had to drag a lot out back through, push them out there and then come around the other side and drag them right through underneath the uh, bit of box thorn that's still live there. Even the end of all this, where this ended, was in on top of all this, took all that out. A lot of this is sort of being held down by this one, which has got a fair bit of weight on it. So until that log there is moved, I can't really get underneath to get all this crap out. I've tried to lift it up, but oh, by hell it's heavy. I tried to get that post out. It wasn't going to happen. There's too much weight above it. <coughs> all held by this thing. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a hole. Reminds me of camouflage netting, all the blooming vine. But anyway, that's... Uh, stuff that'll be happening when uh, we get the tractor in here and move logs for real. <clears throat> At that point, you know, with another person here and whatnot, I might, uh, you know, hopefully we've pulled a few of these little box thorns and stuff out of the way, and maybe even this gangle here, and I might trim them with a chainsaw just before we tow them out, or just start towing and watch them break off, and uh, yeah... But anyway, don't think that one's got much weight on it, I'm not too sure. Um, doesn't really matter anyway, I trimmed so many of these all up around here and flipping heaps of them. They're all trimmed off. Yeah. So yeah, it's all pretty good now, I can walk in and out and... and uh, Pretty much everything's in its place except for these last two, and uh, these probably should be chucked on the wood, uh, the firewood stack that I've got out there as well. Uh, a lot of the ones that are hanging in here, I've got all those out and stuff. There's the odd uh, little rotten piece still here that I've probably got to grab out. I'll get that in a second. Yeah. The uh, corner of the bathroom. Ah, camera doesn't want to adjust. Anyway. Okay, well, a week later and nobody's done anything. I believe that's actually broccolini. Bunching broccoli. I know it is broccolini. 
one young lass who you may know of had all week off and still they're all sitting here and some of these are going a little bit dodgy the lettuce and the peas are really going dodgy I don't even know if they got watered but they seem damp enough so they probably did there's buckets of water I think someone has been watering them and I'm just going to start planting programmed the backup battery I just put in. It's brilliant. Run four different lines. Well, four different solenoids, which are four different lines, and there's cables and the solenoids. And that box of green lid there. So the oak leaf, well this is the uh, broccoli and cauliflower, cauliflower, yeah cauliflower, cauliflower, lettuce, lettuce, broccoli, and broccolini, that's all broccolini, with a bit of luck somebody has been uh, given a bit of responsibility to plant those later this week even though they look like they're just a bit buggered a mesh here and the inclination is also planting the cauliflower it's the last of the cabbage I don't really know how much Mint we want planted. As you will know, it's got a tendency to take off. This is already trying to. Alrighty. I've got a uh, ripper amount of stuff done today. Um, <laughs> didn't know where the hell it would be phone, so I couldn't record in any of it, but I'll show you guys tomorrow. There's quite a uh, bit. But anyway. It's now 1.22 a.m. I uh, spent a lot of the night talking to a young lass that needed a bit of guidance. Um, and uh, by the time I got everything else done, put a video live and and everything like that, see how well this is showing all this. There, you see it now. It's all frost. It is all frost. Yeah, beauty. We hit freezing point. I noticed it on my car, first of all, and, uh, yeah. So anyway, I am going to uh, go and put a bit of stuff over some of the smaller spinaches. I've got plenty of cat food bags and crap. I'm going to drop that over them. Apparently frost comes in from the side, but I'm not uh, exactly uh, prepared to have everything coming from the side. So with a bit of luck, if I just drop it over the top of the pots, some of the smaller spinach will uh, should be a bit safer. For full grown plants and plants that are more permanent and everything, and uh, when you're well prepared and got time, uh, particularly with bushes and stuff like that, you're supposed to wrap them around the outside because the frost comes in from the sides, not from above, like most people think. But anyway, I better get on and uh, deal with this stuff, and I've got to get a flaming fire cranking inside and go to bed and a little. Pussies, they're busy eating. And, uh, yeah. Alrighty, I probably, uh, should be just getting on lighting the, uh, wood heater, which I'm really supposed to be doing right now. But anyway, 
Uh, got a fair bit done yesterday. I'll show that after a light the wood heater up. Um, there's probably it's questioning whether to light it there or down there, but there's a lot of stuff down there still, and there's only half a dozen sticks, so I'll just carry the half dozen sticks down there and uh, set it up down there to burn the uh, <coughs> remains of that box thorn that we didn't quite finish burning. Ah, oh, sheep and lambs, bloody hell. I left here about, I don't know, 4.35 last night, went to the on-grid house, I was, got back here about 1.22 am, and um, even around, you know, 4 o'clock I was carrying stuff off the front lawn, yes, I'm cleaning up the front lawn, out to this area further out, pipe fittings and shit out to where all the other pipes are, out there where I've got all my stash of building materials. And, um, yeah, come back here, as I said, about 1.20, and, uh, around about that time, 1.25, 1.30, uh, I come around the corner, I'd got the fire going, but I was going a bit slow, but I come around the corner to get some firewood, like just some of the stuff I've been cutting out of all this shit, um, and... Lo and behold, in the same path that I was carrying stuff out to bits of piping and stuff off the front lawn out to the building materials stash, and probably only 100 yards away from where I was picking up the firewood here, the bloody sheep been in labour and died in the space of that time while I was away. Um, and it may have been in the space of the time when I left to the time when I woke up here the next morning, um, but uh, I saw a lamb sticking out the back as I was taking the big uh, cylindrical part off the wood heater, and I'm carrying it down there. And there's a lamb, uh, there's a sheep lying on its side with a two feet trying to come out, which had obviously got stuck. Bloody placenta hadn't even broken. Two feet were jammed in the placenta still, and uh, a few marks on the ground. I thought, well, this one's still alive. I'll pull that go up there. Sheep's dead. It's just, it's stiff and everything. And I thought, bloody hell. That didn't last that many hours before it just, uh, died. So, so that was a bit of a surprise, you know. It was a bit of a pity that it, you know, there's a lot of regret with farmer sheep. And there's a lot of shit you can't necessarily do, you know. Like, if that had gone into labour, you know, at four o'clock when I was carrying that shit up and down, hey, I could have helped it and I would have stayed here and kept checking on it from a distance to see that things were progressing and if they weren't after half an hour you know go out there and flame and make it happen um, as I have with a couple of sheep this year <coughs> I'll give you a long shot view Oh, you can't really see it. It's in line with here and that little white car. In all honesty, it looks like a hunk of grass. So it took me a few seconds there to see even where it was because it's the same colour as the blooming lumps of grass. But anyway, unless you got somebody who's willing to go all through my father's property, all through my property, down the hill at the bottom of my property, you know, shine a torch behind friggin' bushes and stuff like that and, and do the entire run of the property every two hours and just do it, you know, non-stop every two hours, do an entire run of the property, checking behind all the bloody trees and shit like that and all the box thorns and whatever, it just, you're never going to prevent it. You know, it's one of these things like... A lot of the time these ones I do save, it's just a matter of being in the right time, uh, right place at the right time. And it is as simple as that. It's just the right place at the right time. And, and um, they just get lucky that I'm uh, digging out weeds, uh, burning bonfires or uh, checking IBC water levels. And, and that's, you know, <coughs> it, it makes it a lot easier when you've got a lot of flat ground with no bushes. But then again... A lot of flat ground with no bushes uh, means not much shelter. And um, 
they sort of need shelter to keep warm for the days that you get wind chill. It's actually uh, reasonably warm today. Any other trouble is I've got another bloody contender. Fuck me. There's two kinds of sheep over here that we... There's not two kinds, there's umpteen varieties, but they sort of fall into two kinds. Crossbred, which generally speaking just means meat breed of sheep. And then there's <coughs> Merino and Corridale and a few others that are your wool breeds of sheep. Uh, Merino being the main one that's been developed in this country and that's exactly what we're running here. The sheep down there that looks very dirty has a bit of placenta hanging out the back and it was hanging around the wood heaps while there was another little lamby hanging around said wood heaps. I won't show you the little lamb because you all get too heartbroken if you know what might be going to happen to it. Um, I can actually see it from here without a problem. And a bad at me and it's sitting underneath a friggin old car trailer and uh, the mother was sort of nearby and the mother's sort of nearby again uh, when I walked down carrying that piece of the wood heater but it's sort of bad at me and I think she's I think she might be ignoring it and it's just sort of trying to follow her but I think it's just going to be abandoned I think it She's ignoring it and basically abandoning it and it's basically just going to friggin' die because I don't have the teats and all this other stuff that you need to feed it. At one point we did back in the 90s, but I don't know what happened to it all. Uh, and you can't just feed them cow's milk. you got to have cow's milk and somehow mix it with cooking oil or something or water it down, blah, blah. And this is one of these things where when you start this crap, you know, you, you've got to feed them in the middle of the bloody night and everything and oh you know I've got a lot of shit on my plate and the fact is if you don't have the teats the thing is dead already if you don't have access to those specific teats uh, that you feed sheep with and I think you can get away with using a cow but you know I don't know where they are or if we've got them I do know there's a black shouldered kite coming towards me Oh, there he goes. So, unfortunately, that might just have to be... Um, I'll leave it and see if it's um, going to be uh, looked after or not. But if it's pretty bloody obvious that it isn't, I might have to just do what's got to be done. Um, sounds harsh and all that, but unless you want to be there six or seven times a day feeding it, warming up milk to a set temperature, you've got the right blooming milk mix to, you know, that if you want the proper stuff, I've got to go somewhere and buy it um, and get the right teats and everything all over one lamb, you know, and you just sort of, ah. A lot of people just don't bother. The other thing is if you do feed them cow milk and mix in with the um, a bit of oil and all this stuff, the curds are too big in cow milk. So you've got to mix it in with the oil or whatever, um, and you can water it down, but what will happen is they'll have bloated guts for life, and they'll be walking around looking big, fat, bulgy for life, because it, it stuffs their guts up, and um, they live, but it never really does their stomach any good, um, and we had one that we did save once before, only one, uh, and yeah, it basically grew up as a runt because it didn't get enough nutrition, um, and also had bulging guts its entire life, and uh, that's what sort of happens when you're dealing with cow milk, uh, feeding it to lambs, but anyway, the mother might take on with it or whatever she... I don't know. Sometimes the lambs are clingy enough that they actually make it work. But I don't have great hopes for that lamb. But door knockers, lamb as well. Um, 
it was very hunched over and huddled up and you know I knew what was going on it was just too cold and I kept trying to stick it on this couple of doormats in the carport uh, and yeah it sort of kept trying to get off the fucking things some sheep are smart enough that they know what they've got to do to keep themselves warm the one I was saying about that we bought up bottle fed that would de deliberately sit on the doormat and you walk out the door and just about trip over it but it was sitting there to keep itself warm well this stupid door knocker's little lamb kept getting off the mats and I put it back on it get off again I had it on a bit of plywood I wanted to get off again and sure as eggs I come back the next day and it was about a metre off the doormat on the cold concrete dead as a doornail and um, she's not terribly good with the lambs to be honest she um, is uh, more interested in herself than she's looking after her own lambs all this stuff about these fucking animal liberation is crapping on about sheep being emotional and this and that and they have emotion no they got two emotions fear and food and that's it and I have seen them abandon newborn lambs for food and the other one I've seen which is really quite a tragic case to see it playing out is the lamb being attached to the mother and you know following it everywhere food gets poured out poured out on the ground and the mother starts eating the food and the little lamb comes up because it's been next to mum and it follows mum everywhere as they do and uh, then it turns around and slams its own lamb into the ground I mean you've got this little thing that's tottering along battling to stay upright on its long little legs and its own mother will just turn around and headbutt the fucking thing straight in the ground and when it gets up It'll headbutt it in the ground again. Why? That's another sheep trying to steal my food. Regardless of the fact that the lamb is only sniffing the solid food and not ready to eat the solid food and still living entirely on milk, but it's everybody else is eating the solid food, so it's going to have a sniff and see what it is. Get out of my food. Get out of my food. I've seen a mother slam its newborn lamb just fucking headbutt the shit out of it and knock it over probably you know five or six times about two minutes and that was its own lamb newborn and basically another stunt they do is uh, that same lamb if it doesn't want to have a bar of it as it goes to feed off its udder it'll walk off on it and it'll keep walking off on it you know and you see these little lambs that are trying to follow their mother and sticking by their mother and the mother just could not give a fuck and it just keeps trying to headbutt it and push it away and headbutt it and, and the poor little lamb's getting knocked over fucking 15, 20 times a day still following the mother because it's emotionally attached to its own mother you know, or it's probably instinct actually um, and yet 15 or 20 times a day this sheep will slam its own newborn lamb into the ground and eventually, you know, the lamb just... Uh, ends up getting too hungry and too cold and just freaking dies and uh, all the shit about you know sheep being emotional like it's, it's fucking bullshit for the wool breeds for the meat breeds it's very different <clears throat> crossbreds as they call them it's very different they're very good at looking after their lambs whereas the wool breeds are useless and 80% uh, of and I've seen this play out at somebody else's farm. 80% of um, maiden ewes, as they call them, which is another way of saying ewes that have got their first lamb, like this little one around here that's been abandoned, 80% of them will abandon their first lamb. And only 20% of them will actually look after their first lamb. And it is, it is that fucked up. And this might just become one of the 80%. Anyway, there's nothing I can really do. You can't really force attraction, like, you know, force a sheep to take its lamb. And if you do, the thing will just go fucking berserk and it will headbutt the lamb for sure, you know. And it's sort of... 
It's almost like saying pests tear the shit out of vegetables and there's nothing you can do about it, you know, it's, but it's actually worse because it's a lamb and it's cute. But anyway, where you got livestock, you got dead stock and uh, this is what you get running wool breeds. It's just useless mothers, it's as simple as that. And if we're running meat breeds, some of the mothers are brilliant. I've heard of some of them, once their lamb is about two months old, I've heard of some people taking the lamb off them for two or three days, putting the lamb back out there and it accepts the lamb just, just like that. Whereas the merinos are so fussy that too much human smell on the skin, like if you touch the lamb too much, the mother will reject the lamb because it smells too much like human, which is where I see everybody running out trying to pat lambs and catch lambs, and I'm like, don't fucking do that shit because you're signing its death warrant by rubbing your hands and your body smell over it too much. Um, but oh, we've got to catch the little lamb, the little lamb's cute, don't worry, the lamb will come back, don't rub your fucking hands on it, don't catch it like that, because once there's too much smell on it, the mum's going to reject it, and you've fucking, you've tried to be cutesy with it, and you've bloody well basically killed it in the process via rejection from the mother, because the thing smells like fucking human, she won't touch it anymore, and that's what really shits me sometimes when I see people uh, trying to help particularly kids are, are bad at this, trying to help get sh uh, lambs or sheep back inside a fence they've got out of, and uh, you might as well just shoot the fucking thing in the head because too much of human smell and, and it's going to die a slow death anyway when it gets rejected.